Marius, a fan of the Bullet Club, and Kenny Omega. I approve of this message. So, um, I, I, in fact, it's a deck that I, uh, I I do not like its position in the meta game very much right now. Part of what makes it powerful historically is the fact that you are initiating things for one and two mana, um, often one, and your opponent's interaction costs one or two, and you just get the better of them when things go on the stack. The fact that one of the most popular decks, maybe the most popular deck in this, if Phoenix plays with main deck gut shots and thing in the ice, which sort of trumps, when, you know, when you're finally doing the thing, uh, trumps anything that you can do to interact. Um, usually, in fact, is positioning itself as being more efficient and winning those kind of battles. And I don't think it wins them reliably against Is It Phoenix. Well, we're gonna. This will be a good sample, I suppose. See how yep. this matchup goes. My rule of thumb is if if the boss isn't recommending Infect, I wouldn't play it. No, and I love Infect. I regularly advocate for this deck. Um, I usually respect it as a choice. I think it's historically been underplayed uh, pre and post Cataxian Probe, but now uh, I would not recommend this deck right now. Polluted Delta will be sacrificed. Job going to fall down to at least 19. We'll see how low he wants to go. Looks like he'll go down to 17 via Steam Vents. Is it time for something like a thing in the ice? It is. So four counters on the 0-4 as we head back over to Chalawa. There is an Ink Moth Nexus. This is a Groundswell. That is a Might of Old Crozier. That's an attack for nine Infect. Can Marius get the last one across? Yep. He's got two Infect creatures on the battlefield to try to do it. In Blighted Agent and Ink Moth Nexus as we head back over to Job. Job will draw a card. Well, this game took a turn real quick. Yeah, a uh, uh, really nice turn there for Marius, being able to get the nine in and, and represent a second threat for next turn. So a lot for Job here to manage. And you also want to be careful if you're in Joe's position about pulling the trigger on Thing in the Ice too soon. It is mandatory. And so uh, if you just go about your business, cast some spells, and you lose your last line of defense for a Nexus or a Blighted Agent, uh, that could be really bad too. So a lot for Joe to consider. Faithless looting is where things will begin. Joe will draw two cards and discard two cards. Arclight Phoenix is one. We'll see what the other discard will be here for Jonathan in just a second. Drove a multiple time open champion here on the SCG Tour. Again, normally doing it with some brews, but decided to keep it pretty stock and conventional this weekend. Hard to argue given the power level of the deck he's playing. Yeah, it says a lot when Joe, who almost always adds another color, does something unorthodox, what have you, is playing a stock list. That, that almost never happens. Thought Scour also going to go to the graveyard. Steve Vents untapped. Is land number three. As Job falls down to 15. Remember, Job's hand's going to be forced no matter what next turn because Marius can simply go to combat and attack with the Blighted Agent. So there's no really bluffing to be done. He's got to put his hand on the table here soon. And you got to be careful here because, you know, you would like to have the third spell cast to get the Arc-like Phoenix out of the graveyard and potentially block the Nexus, but then that puts you in a spot where if you cast a fourth spell, your Thing in the Ice transforms, and if you do that at an inopportune time, uh, you might shut out your defenses.
The short of it is, it is complicated. Yes, it is. With Joe tapping two mana here, it feels like a mana morphos is on the way, but maybe not. It also makes you wonder about Job's familiarity with a deck like this because he traditionally doesn't play strategies like this. Well, th this is really tough. Uh, again, it's, you know, you, you want to cast the third spell, but if you cast the third spell, then the fourth spell forces the issue on Thing in the Ice. And if you do that before you're ready, uh, it's possible that you're now unable to block. It'll be red, red. Does Marius have a dismember or something of the sort here? There are two main deck copies of Dismember in the deck. I mean, I, I assume in that spot, if he if he had Dismember, that we would have we would have seen it there, but perhaps not. Another Metamorphose. All right, so that's the third spell, which means Arclight Phoenix will be coming back. We know that. Looks like it's too blue. Now here's the Thought Scour. One blue floating trigger thing in the ice. This will make Marius pick up the Blighted Agent. Hit one, Lightning Axe, two, another thing in the ice. Draw. Okay. One blue left. Terramander. It's pretty good. Yeah, the goal here is to have another blocker back to manage the Nexus. Yeah. This actually ended up being great because now Job can attack for 10. Well, he may want to leave both flyers back because if you, let's say you attack with the Phoenix and uh, Awoken Horror, you lose to Dismember. So th this gives you a second blocker back and you still have way more uh, than lethal coming across the next turn. So Job just being a little bit extra conservative here, but I think that's a good spot for it. I guess my argument to that would be if my opponent plays a Blighted Agent, how am I working myself around that the following turn? Um, well, I think that uh, uh, Job has a bolt in hand. So you go um, adapt the Terramander, adapt the Terramander, bolt you, and that's lethal. Okay. I guess yeah, the Terramander is so cheap to adapt right now, too. So there's the Bolt and the Blighted Agent. There's a Bolt there, which is just yeah. there bolts everywhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job, Job had, uh, I don't know if he drew a Bolt, but I know that he had at least one in his hand. So he had cover if, if Marius' was plan was to block the next turn. Well, well, I guess that's some of the appeal to playing Is It Phoenix? Now, isn't it? I mean, it's that it's busted. Yeah. <laughs> Turn two, thing in the ice. Turn three, easily transform thing in the ice. Turn you four, win the game. I, I'm just a big fan of modern of just doing the best, the best proactive stuff that they let you do for zero and one. I've yep. always thought that was the best recipe. For a long time, I, I thought that Infect fit that bill the best, and now I think it's Is It Phoenix does that more reliably, and the fact that it has main deck gut shots makes it so hard for the Infect player to, you know, uh, get the better of it once spells are going on the stack. Well, Jonathan Job does win game number one there over Marius Chalua. Is it Phoenix? Very quickly up a game there over Infect. We go to the sideboards. We'll start with Chalua, who's got three Shaper Sanctuary, three Spell Pierce, two Dissenters Deliverance, two Nature's Claim, two Relic Regenerus, a Grafter's Cage, a Spell Skype, and one I actually like here in Wild Defiance. Yeah, I like the Wild Defiance. I, I think the, ca the copies of Shaper Sanctuary are fine here, too. Um, I'm not that into Spell Pierce. It's not like the Is it Phoenix deck relies so heavily on one critical card resolving it's more of a critical mass thing um but you know uh, uh, you could i suppose you could bring him in try to fight over bolts and such for job's side of things two abrade two blood moon two spell pierce and a ton of one ofs an anger of the gods beacon bolt ceremonious rejection dispel chandra torch of defiance rending volley <laughs> surgical extraction zap caster mage and the reason I'm laughing is because of the card you brought with you that you have. Several shatter storms. You have several different, different <laughs> shatter storms. Whatever shatter storm you want. <laughs> you want an invocation one? I got that. You want an antiquities one? I got that too. Not for this matchup. Like the dispel. Um, I, I like the abrades. 
gets where it gets trickier for me is the anger of the gods and the beacon bolt. Uh, both powerful cards, but three mana sorceries are uh, pretty sketchy in terms of trying to get it done against infect. So Joe may bring it in, but I would probably uh, err on just trying to bring in the one mana cards. Just the fact that you have so many Shatterstorms with you on this particular trip. Oh, you need to borrow a Shatterstorm? That's lucky for you, because I have lots of them. I just imagine you, swords. you being an arms dealer opening your coat of just... <laughs> I've got, I've got, like, I've got, I've got this invocation one that no one can read. Like Nicholas Cage, yeah. Lord of War. That's right. Shatterstorms uh, the plenty. Yeah. Uh, two after now, now the sideboards are done. These players will be ready here for game number two in just a moment. Very quickly, we do want to talk about the StarCityGames.com newsletter uh, because it is your source for Magic: The Gathering news. It's got highlights from some of our very best articles each and every week. Upcoming SCD tour dates and locations. SCG IQs and game nights near you. Best of all, it's totes free to sign up for. Go to StarCityGames.com slash newsletter for more information and get signed up today because you're just on the internet all day anyway. Let's go check it out. It's free. Get it about once a week. I skim it usually. I appreciate that, Skim. Yeah. Appreciate that. It's very nice of you. Just scroll through it once, con then control F for my name, and then close it. Not going to find it often. <laughs> no. no, you're not. But well, it's good to check in. But again, I do appreciate the honesty very yeah. much. Looking for something in particular. Jonathan Job off to a good start so far this weekend. The Houston, Texas native, a big Astros fan. So life's probably pretty good for him right now as far as baseball is concerned. 2018, he played in, looks like 12 opens. Top eight at two and one two. There were two team opens alongside Brian Basoko, and then once with Rudy Briska and the other with Dave Thomas. All time, he's got six open top eights, three Ws, and an invitational top eight as well. And currently, he's training to be a pilot, a job I could never do. Well, it can't be. I mean, a lot of people do it, and accidents are pretty rare. Although, speaking of, I I gotta say some. You'll appreciate this. As someone who has put together some corporate newsletters. Okay. Uh, I got an email from Southwest. Just okay. So you know, there was an airplane went down a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I'm very aware. Trage a tragedy, of course. I get an email from Southwest, and it talks about uh, the, the brand of, pr of plane that went down and how they have a handful of them. And they're going to – I don't remember if they said that we, we did some a safety check and it was fine or we're going to be grinding those planes for a little while. I didn't get that far. But they said that the plane was involved in an accident. It's a really weird use of the passive voice. <laughs> the plane was involved. It was around. And, and no, it's like, no, the plane crashed into the <laughs> ground. It wasn't involved like – it's the craziest use of passive voice. I'm going to try to find it here. Much like I'm involved in this show. Right, yeah. It's a Pendlehaven and a noble hierarch as Patrick is now scouring his phone. Jonathan Job will sacrifice a scalding turn. Regarding the, regarding the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft type that was involved in the Ethiopian Airlines flight. Was involved. <laughs> you, you know? It had some involvement. I couldn't. I couldn't get past that. I could not. <laughs> well, you have to delicately word those emails. I believe, yeah. and maybe uh, maybe a, a couple sets of eyes on them is important. Right. It's like uh, the use of passive voice anytime there's a, a, a the police shoot someone. Sure. Sure. <laughs> the That's gun. The gun was fired. <laughs> An airplane-related accident. Was involved in an airplane-related accident. <laughs> It'll be a serum missions here for Joe. What do you do with that? Who wrote that? <laughs> Certainly not one of our what? writers or yeah. editors. I found out about that whole airplane thing uh, yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. That's, that's, a, whole, that's a whole thing. Yeah, it's uh, an obviously an enormous tragedy. But yeah. Wow. That is just not... That is not how you would accurately describe that. Shaper Sanctuary into Blighted Agent. Not a bad start here for Marius. Did 
Job just did a little cantripping on turn one, as this deck oftentimes does. This time it was with the Serum Visions. So we'll see what the second turn yields. Last game it was Thing in the Ice. This game it won't be. It'll be a Lightning Bolt. Going after Blighted Agent. Shaper Sanctuary will trigger whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls. You may draw a card. Good against decks that try to uh, target your creatures with spells and abilities. There you go. Very well done there, partner. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering exactly what the deck list look like for both these players, you can find it on Cardboard Live here on our broadcast. Both Jonathan and Marius's deck lists are available. See exactly what the 75 cards are that they're working with. Looks like old Inkmoth's going to get fired up here. Pendlehaven it. Might have old Crozier it. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Well, this is still not that big of an investment in terms of cards. Marius is still just putting one down on the table here, and if Job has a response, you at least get to draw a card off the Shaper Sanctuary. Of course, uh, Marius would prefer that this would resolve, but it's not the end of the world here if Job has something. Well, I think Job has something. It's a lightning bolt. Another one. Shaper Sanctuary will trigger, and those are gone. Marius hoping there for a mutagenic growth. Not come off. Back to Job we go. And now Marius with no infect creatures on the battlefield. Time we we gotta do them dirty now. Regular damage, let's go. This is a, <laughs> this is a Job, long Job already at 14, baby. It's a long ways away. There's Terramander. Spire Buff Canal, pass the turn back. Looks like Marius has quite a few lands in hand right now. And there is a relic of Progenitus. Scan the graveyard. And it looks like going to crack it. it. Means that Terramander is pretty far away from adapting now. Mutagenic growth to draw there for Chalawa. And now here's a Spellskite. Chalawa very well covered here against removal spells going forward. Yep. Spell Sky plus Shaper Sanctuary is a lot for Job to work with, but the, the question here is, uh, can Marius find a threat card here and then cobble together enough pump? Because Job is still untouched here, zero in fact. It'll be a Thought Scour. That'll turn over a Thought Scour and a Flooded Strand. Job will draw a card. One thing that's worth noting about this deck is here's an Opt, is that it's not hard for Job to fill up his graveyard again. I'm not particularly fond of any graveyard hate against this deck. Like I said, it's, you know... Uh, you, you take it for granted. You don't necessarily acknowledge it looking at deck lists that are filled with cantrips, but uh, this is the result of that. Now Joe will draw a card. Really hard to break it up with one hate piece. It just reassemble and go again. Now it's Serum Visions. Draw a card. Scry two. Both those cards are headed to the bottom. Next up is a Faithless Looting. The best can trip of the bunch. Draw two and discard two. There's Arclight Phoenix finally. Let's see what else Joe has to discard.
Again, Job not really known for playing what one would consider the best deck in a format. He normally puts his own little spin on it, but he's about as stock as can be this weekend, uh, folks. I, 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 I'm trying to recall a time where I've seen him do this and cannot. Another faith of sitting. I mean, that's just how good this deck is. As Job will draw two more and discard two more. See if he finds another copy of Arclight Phoenix. Even when we saw him top eight a few weeks ago, or very close to it in Dallas with Teamer Drakes, that was an Is It Drakes deck in standard that actually splashed for Hydro Crisis. So he took a unique spin to that deck and had a really good tournament. As now here, Scalding Tarn will be sacrificed. Get himself a basic island. And I would assume we're at eight spells in the graveyard at this point. Yeah, that Relic of Regen is not so much. Graveyard hate's just not the way to do it against this deck. They can fill up their graveyard so fast. You might get the opportunity to catch a Phoenix, but they also have some agency over if you get to do that or not, really. Yep, and there's the Adapt, so Terramander is huge. It's eight this turn, eight next turn, and... I mean, I suppose uh, Marius is not at risk of getting bolted out necessarily next turn because you're the spell sky, but he's in a ton of trouble. No infect creature on the battlefield. Job at zero infect, 13 life. Like I said, you're going to have to do him dirty. Boom. Get him spell skyed in for two. We'll go back over to Job. All it takes is another Arclight Phoenix or a Lightning Bolt, I believe. Well, actually, Lightning Bolt won't do it exactly because of the Spell Skite. Let's see what this is. Thing in the ice. Pass that turn back over. That's Lance. It's Jonathan Job with a W here over Marius Chihuahua. Two games to zero. Is it Phoenix? Going to clean up on Infect pretty easily here. And for Jonathan.